Hi, I'm Greg Hallett, and this is a follow-up to a post I made on my blog for last week. I basically set up a little contest. I gave everybody a challenge. I said, take the first four bars of the hymn, Brethren, We Have Met to Worship, which sounds like this. Um, one, five, one, five, one. That's your progression that you would see in a hymn. And I said, take that progression and make it better. Work on just four bars of the song. And I said, if you work on those four bars, you're going to have 75% of the song done because it's an A-A-B-A, 16-bar song where you repeat bars one through four three times. At the beginning, the first four bars, the second four bars, and the last four bars. So even though we're just going to concentrate on a little bit of the song, if we get this down, if we come up with some harmonic things that we like, we've gone a long, long way toward coming up with a harmonic plan for the song. I was thrilled by how many of you sent in submissions. So many of you did, and I love the fact that so many of you are young. Um, you guys are way, way more advanced at your age than I was. I can promise you that. Um, it's great that you're learning these things. Very, very, very good stuff that came in. Now, let me go through. I'm actually I'm going to pull some examples. I can't play all of them. If I don't play yours, it's not because it was good, and it's not because it was bad. It's simply um, because I pulled certain ones to demonstrate little things, little things that might be helpful. In some cases, I'm going to use your work as an example. In some cases, an uh, example of something good. And other times, I'm going to say, well, you know, I, I think it's okay, but we can improve it a little bit here and there. And we'll go through those things as well. Okay, so three basic categories these fell into, roughly. All three are good. The first level I would call minor key substitutions, which is the very, very basics of reharmonization. This is what you learn um, if you went to college and studied this kind of thing. This would be probably where you would start, if not end, quite honestly. Um, and basically, they would talk about switching out a six chord for one chord or a three chord for one chord. And if you do that, you have a very smooth sound, something like this. And I talk about that at length in other um, clips and in my course on reharmonization. But basically all we're doing there is we're turning a 1-5-1 one, one progression into a 1-6-2-5-1 minor minor progression. That's what we're doing. We're inserting some other minor chords that give it a very smooth, very tonal, pretty sound. And even though it's sort of basic, even though it's sort of where we start, I am not implying that it, I don't like it or it's simple because I can promise you that this is what I do. I play a ton of this kind of stuff in my music because, first of all, it sounds so smooth. It's not over the heads of the people listening. People like that sound. It's a very, very nice, soothing, soft sound. And so if that's what you sent me, and by the way, most of you did. Most of what I got was that kind of thing. Um, kudos uh, for doing it that way. It sounds great. Um, some of you would have done step progressions maybe. I threw in one extra special chord in there, but really I was just playing one, minor two, minor three, then four, minor three, minor two, five, one. So sometimes, a lot of times, these minor chord substitutions are going to move in the circle of fifths, down by a fifth, one to six, then six to two, which is down a fifth, two to five is down a fifth, five to one. You'll see movement around circle of fifths by fifths. But one of the things that I teach is to move in steps as well, and many of you have taken that to heart because I got a lot of that, of what I just played, where you go from one to two to three to four, three to one, which sounds great. So maybe some of you might have started the song on a three chord. So you hear the difference there. Instead of playing, you might start it on three. Okay, that works as well, sounds really good. So we have the minor chord substitutions. The next thing I saw was a lot of you using dominant chords. You know, we can take that same 1-6-2-5-1 progression and change the minor chords to dominance. It would sound like this. I shouldn't play it so rhythmically all of a sudden. Let me, let me play it lyrically again. how the sound is starting to get more complex 
and we really do get a lot better sound when we move toward using dominants. Their secondary dominants, instead of using all minor sevenths, change some of them to dominants. We call dominants the color chord because the, the dominant can have all kinds of interesting, very thick, complex sounds. Really, really think about, try to incorporate some of those dominants into your, into your, uh, your progressions. And then some of you, oh, by the way, before I go on, as soon as you introduce dominance, you have the ability to introduce tritone substitutions. And the real, what, what happens there is you'll see that when people use a dominant chord, for example, if you're in the key of F and you play a D7, by definition of a tritone substitution, you can also play a flat seven there if you want. It's a different sound, but it works. It'll just give you a little more complexity to your music. And some of you that sent in substitutions or reharmonizations use tritone subs as well. All right, and then um, the last level some of you went to, which is just uh, you went a little bit above and beyond, and uh, some really creative stuff um, that we'll talk about as well. Some of these really cool chords like this one. Um, and we'll talk about those. But there are some really, really good stuff. So let's take a few minutes and walk through some, some of these examples. This first one came to me. This is in the last category, the sort of complex category. Um, and by the way, I'm just playing your chords. I'm not playing it like you would play it, so don't hold it against me if I'm not playing like you would. Um, I'm just going to voice the way I feel. And um, I didn't really practice this. So we're going to be sight reading and voicing on the spot. And don't blame me if I ruin your, uh, your harmonization. But this was an interesting one. Um, when I looked at it, I didn't really understand it, but I played it and I said, yeah, you know what that works. Here it is. Okay, so I played it sort of rhythmically. It works well in that kind of style, sort of rhythmically. Um, I played a little bit slower. Again, from a functional standpoint, functional harmony standpoint, I struggle here um, because I don't necessarily understand it. You know, there, there's, by the way, there's a rule that I sort of follow. The overriding guiding rule for reharmonization goes back to Duke Ellington, a great jazz musician 60 years ago. He said, if it sounds good, it is good. And that's pretty profound. If it sounds good, it is good. So when I play this and it sounds good, but I can't explain it, I have to assume I just don't know enough about music. Uh, but it sounds good to me. Um, there's a few things, though, that probably can be improved here. Um, I'm gonna, and you'll hear as I go through these, you're going to hear me say this over and over again. I look at how the chords interact with each other, and I don't like to see chords moving in thirds. And that happens here a few places. For example, E flat at the end of bar two, she moves from E flat major seven to a C over an E, which is just a um, tri uh, triad in first inversion. And then from there down to C which is a movement by a third, and I'm not a huge fan of that, to be honest with you. I'm not a big fan of using triads at all in this, in this, what she's doing here, because every other chord is cool. It's a cool chord, and then you throw in a triad, and it's sort of uh, boring. Um, so I would work on that a little bit. Um, I would actually throw a tritone sub in here, and this is a little advanced, I know, but I would probably throw Let's see, we're moving from E flat. I don't, I want to leave the C7 there because C7 is going to resolve to F. The chord that I would want to use there probably would be a D flat 7, which is a tritone sub for the G7. G7 wants to resolve to C7. Remember I said we could use tritone subs for any dominant chord. So I'm going to use a D flat 7. It sounds like this. If you wanted, you could go, I went to A minor, but you could go to back to F like she says. Um, why do I like that? Well, notice that it creates a smoother transition between the chords. Chords like to move in steps. We're on E flat. We're going to move down a step to D flat and then to C. Okay. Uh, and I really like the chord there. Okay. Just a little thing. 
a little thing that makes a big difference um, over some of your heads. I understand that. It's a little bit complex. Probably should have started with something simpler, but maybe that'll help you understand a little bit at least how we look at this, how at least I look at it, which may be the wrong way. Somebody else sent me this. I don't know who this was. I just printed it out, but I liked it. So here it is. By the way, they told me exactly what to play instead of chords, which I'm already being delinquent on. Okay, so let me give you the chords really quick. You go from one, then flat three diminished to two, which by the way, I love that sound. Uh, let's, that wants to go right here. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Several of y'all sent that in. I love that chord. Uh, flat three diminished. I don't like this though. I don't like where they're going from the G minor. I don't like that. Um, I would probably change that and I don't like where it goes either. From a G7 to an E7. Again, movement by a third, not a big fan. Um, one of the things you could do there Play A7, resolve it to D7, and then G minor. So A flat, A7 down a fifth to D7, D7 down a fifth to G minor. Uh, okay, there's a, one other thing I would probably change at the end, but I'm going to stop there um, for the moment. By the way, if you don't like that D7, Let's see. You could play D minor if D7, that D7 is pretty, pretty thick. Um, again, it's got that sharp nine on top. I love that sound right there. Um, that was pretty radical surgery there. So instead of going to the one chord or the F chord on bar three, we're going to G the two chord instead. All right, more. Let's look at a few more here. Um, somebody sent in this. Uh, I'm changing it already. Uh, they start on a four chord. I like that. Um, a couple of things. First of all, starting on a four chord is nice and unique. One thing you can do there is you can start on a minor four six. Okay, and then the other thing I would change is resolve it not down to the one chord, resolve it to the three. Step it down to the three rather than moving from four to one. Move from four to three. Yeah, and I'm not a big fan of staying on the B flat for so long either in those last two bars. If you see that, you're holding out on B flat for four beats. There's some other things you can do there. Um, for example, well, there's all kinds of possibilities, and you'll see some of them as I play uh, through through these. But um, Try to avoid hanging out. Try, try to be logical. Sort of change chords pretty regularly. Um, certainly a little more regularly, regularly than that. By the way, I see sisters sent these in. Here's her sisters. Um, um, they start the same way. This one uses uh, uh, minor chord substitutions. Um, the sister used a tritone. Rebecca used, uh, not tritone, she used secondary dominance, or at least one secondary dominant, while the sister used um, Lydia, used um, minor chord subs. They're good, very good. Um, again, two things. First of all, consider starting on a minor four, and then resolve down to the three instead of the one. As a matter of fact, a really nice thing here you can do. I guess I should tell you what I did, right? I went minor four, six, three, flat three diminished, two, five, one, but you could go to the uh, same thing. 
Uh, I promise you I actually do know how to play the piano. I'm just not showing it today. Oh, let's see here. Here's an interesting one <coughs> from John. John starts on a five chord. That would work in some settings. It would have to be a unique setting. That is a little unusual. Um, not a big fan, by the way, of starting on a five chord and then not resolving to the one because the five one progression is typically what's going to set up a tonal center in the ears of the listener. And um, if you just start on a five, move to six, you're probably going to have confusion in people's minds of what key you're in, unless you set this up with an intro and that kind of thing. And then, to be honest with you, I'm probably playing it poorly, John. Uh, I like the ending especially. You get that B flat, suspend, little suspended things going on there. Um, good job. Very creative. Daniel. Okay, let me say this really quick, Daniel. Um, it's good. Um, a couple things. First of all, we could probably talk about the way you actually notated the chords. Um, but I will say also, again, movement by a third is not a no-no, but I would really like you to avoid it. At the end of this song, you move from A to F. You see that in bar three, you move from A to F, which is down a third. F to C, which is down a fourth, which is better, but not great and then C7, or you stay on C. But again, try to get away from that movement by a third. Now, how easy is that? Well, when you're here on your A minor, instead of going to F, just go down to D. And then D down to G. Okay? Um, or if you want to get creative, you can. Um, what I gave you was pretty basic. D to G to C to F. Um, and you're saying, well, Greg, I didn't want to be like everybody else. Well, that's, yeah, that's fine, too. But uh, do remember, and just be conscious of the fact of how chords like to move. And movement by a third is considered to be a fairly weak way to move. All right. Here's some. Danny sent in, what, six of them. Let's see. I'm going to play a couple of them for you here. We got... Okay, a couple of things I want to point out. First of all, tritone. That's a tritone sub for the C7. That's F sharp 7. That's an acquired taste. Some of you like it, some of you won't. If you don't like it, skip it. I like it. I just like it in moderation. Um, but that works well. Okay, the other thing you will point out, we got this little movement in half steps. By the way, you could throw more in there too, Danny. You hear what I did? I probably should tell you, but it's a... Uh... Uh, moving up by half steps. I uh, played F, F sharp, diminished, G minor, uh, G sharp, diminished, a minor, B flat, um, minor six, B diminished, and then C suspended. Okay, let's see what else we got. We got it. This next one is interesting. I see. I'm playing it too slow. has a very, very nice, long, stepwise movement down. It goes like this. Straight down, very, very consistent, very logical. That's the bass line, which we tend to like. Only thing about this, Danny, I would say this, um, I think you go too far with it. Because in some cases, you're going to chords that are not great. Uh, again, you're going to some triads, some inverted triads. 
if you can't come up with better chords, in some cases, maybe give up on the idea and go ahead and punt and go and play a different, a different line. Um, in other words, what I'm saying is sometimes you let the structure get in the way of the beauty. Don't do that. When you have beauty versus structure, I think you should go, for the most part, you should go with beauty. Um, and in some cases, I think the, the pun on the thing that is forcing you to some things that don't work so well. Here's my line. Okay, that's a nice one. Um, two things about it. First of all, hanging out in the B flat for so long, I'm not a big fan of. You can do something different. Something like that. But the other thing that he does well here, I like, is that um, that is a uh, flat seven chord, which likes to resolve back to the one chord. Just something different, so you're not ending every song with the five one progression. So he ends up, uh, let's see, I'm just seeing if he ever ends with the five one on any of these. He doesn't. Well, one he does, but it's the minor chord substitution example. All right, here's one more. Okay, I like this a lot. There's two things he's doing really well here. First of all, he's got a B flat, and he's gonna, which is a four chord, and he's gonna insert a two of five, a two of four, and then a five of four in front of it. So B flat is the four chord, so he puts the two of four, which is C minor, and then he plays the five of four, which is F7. Okay, so you got this sound. Okay, so here it is again. So it's a really nice sound. I teach that a lot. I talk about that a lot. You can read more about that or watch videos or whatever. Um, that particular tactic I like. And then he uses that gorgeous, uh, I love, love that chord, flat three diminished, secondary dominant, that's the tritone sub, again, for C7, okay? So that's really, really nice. As a matter of fact, to be honest with you, I think that particular progression, if I was gonna pick, I'm still trying to decide who he is this. But this would be probably, that one would probably be in the top two. Um, I'm trying to decide between that and one that's creative, very creative. Um, but in terms of just logical, functional harmony, really, really like that. All right, so those are some, here's some that I'm playing around with. Let's see, this first one. Um, that one right there, F to A flat seven, what I'm thinking there with A flat seven, is that a, tr a tritone sub again? Tritone sub for D seven. We talked about earlier going to seven, okay? I'm using a tritone sub, which is A flat seven. Down to G minor. Okay, now the last chord is just sort of a, I don't know what you'd call that. It's just a shock a chord. F sharp major seven. I like to do that kind of thing from some time, especially when you're playing the song more rhythmically. Um, can't explain it. I just like to do it. And then this last one. Um, a little more lyrical. Um, I'm going from F. That's a flat, a sharp four diminished, half diminished, sharp four, half diminished. Oh, uh, let's see. I'd probably play like that, going down to your flat, uh, excuse me, your four minor six chord. Flat three diminished. By now you know I love that. G minor seven. Now here, I'm using that. That's a sort of a tritone substitution, but it's not really because I have a major seventh in the melody but it still works. D7, probably, I don't know. That's a, that is a straight um, secondary dominant there, just like we were seeing earlier. Excuse me, tritone sub there. Um, 
again, stylistically, if you're playing rhythmically, which I'm sort of working on something with this, and it's going to be very, very rhythmic, um, some of that stuff will work better than other times. So those are some of your ideas, which are great, a few of my ideas. Hopefully you learned, if nothing else, you sort of got a feel for how we look at harmony and how it all works together. I'll see you next time.